I'm Cindy Bowen, and thank you for joining me for this episode of Living a Life of Oneness. Welcome back, everyone. I'm Cindy Bowen with Life of Oneness, and I'm here today with Maria Santiago, who is a sister Earth Guardian. Say hello, Maria. Hola, my name is Maria. Hi, everyone. <laughs> and you're still in Costa Rica. You live in Costa Rica, correct? Yeah. Yeah. I do what part of Costa, Costa Rica? <laughs> what part of Costa Rica are you in currently? Uh, right now, uh, we live in Tinamaste, which is um, around 30 minutes from Dominical Beach and the South Pacific of Costa Rica. So beautiful. Tell us a little bit more about you, Maria. I know you have some beautiful land there that you're doing some work with and a lot of many projects and how you kind of came to be an Earth Guardian. So my journey has started um, in uh, the last year, in 2020, when I watched for the first time the Aluna um, movie that is in YouTube or you can find it anywhere in the internet. And I uh, start to know about the mammals and their mission, very um, integrated with what my purpose I feel in life is to be connected to Mother Earth and protect her and like do all my best possibilities to protect her. So when I, when I watch this uh, documentary about them talking that their main purpose is protect her and they are the guardians of this world of, of the of the earth I was so connected to them and so tuned into their mission and purpose and then I guess that's how everything just um, connect and synchronize and I heard this call about to be an earth guardian and I knew that this was my call to just work with them train get on the training with them learn from them and I start doing it and now that we have a, a stewards of a piece of land in Costa Rica, I feel like this is a huge synchronicity and part of this huge uh, mission that we have. And yes. And um, tell us a little bit more about you personally. I know you have some projects and things that you're working on with that are kind of in tune with the earth and um, products and things I think you have too, correct? Yeah, uh, so I have been working with uh, a lot of like uh, herbs, which is um, uh, herbs medicine as a natural medicine. I studied um, in 2018 uh, Master Herbalist on the School of Natural Healing with the Dr. Christopher Rowan, that he started this school in Utah. And um, I, I felt a big passion and call to work with uh, mother nature and the medicine that she brings to us. And I also study detoxification um, with Dr. Robert Morse in uh, Florida. Um, and this has been a big journey of connecting to the earth and healing because the reason that we are sick is because of our disconnection from mother earth. So I have worked through this message very deep from the past uh, four or five years and through my own healing process to, to detoxify myself and, and connect with mother again, because that was the reason of any sickness or illness or uh, uncomfort or discomfort uh, that we have or had happened into our life. It's because we are so disconnected from mother earth. And this is my philosophy, just get back and connect with modern nature and you will heal because you will connect in through your right diet, into your personal uh, practice daily to connect, to ground yourself through the feet, to the sun and just connect more to mother. Yeah, that's so true. And that was one of the really big things that impacted me when you know, Kandi Maku said, you know, for the mamos, he was speaking for them saying, let the elements guide you. And then there's this idea of like asking for permission for what you take. 
but also making payment for the things that you take. And I spoke about this a couple of podcasts ago, but um, you know, for me, it's like everything I do now I'm asking for permission. And it's like, my eyes are just like, like blown open. Like before I enter a space, before I enter the river, before I approach a tree and hug it, like I'm asking for permission rather than just like, Oh, I'm going to connect with the earth and dance and, you know, like all these things, like, it's actually like this sentient being that I'm now in relationship with. And, and, you know, one of the things he was saying was to treat nature as if it's your lover or your friend, or even a stranger, like what respect you would give and, and treat it as like, I'm sorry, can I take this from you? Or please may exactly. I have this or thank you instead of just like, we're just blindly kind of going around like ripping food out of the garden and you know, not really like acknowledging that this is a living being, this is a sentient, you know, and so it, it's really kind of changed my entire perspective on every single thing I'm doing. When I go to the store to buy groceries, I'm asking like, which vegetables want to come home with me, you know, so it's, it's just, um, it's really, really eye opening. So yeah, thank you for that reminder. Um, and it's wonderful what you're doing too, to um, kind of incorporate and weave that the, what, what you're already doing with the herbs and uh, with the medicines and the, the healing work um, with getting everything back in order in your physical body, because that was also one of the main things that they talked to us about was to get yourself in order and yes. what you're using with the herbs and things and health. It's, it's all feeding into that order of self so that the planet can also be in order. Um, so I wanted to ask you also, um, what was, what was your experience like? Um, I know what my experience was like, but I'm interested to hear what your experience was like during the retreat, the training and the time that we spent with the mamas. I think it was very, um, impactful in a very positive way, um, because it made me put everything in order in my head about like what I really need to, how I need to live in order, right? With harmony, with the mother earth and also with everything around me. But as you say already, like getting in order with the elements, right? How are we living and how are we acknowledge, acknowledging our power and our place in this earth? What are we doing? Like, are we aware of, every action that we are doing like has an impact and equal a, a reaction back. It, it doesn't matter if it's like going into the river, right? Like in which size, side of the current you are batting yourself to. Like everything has a, a, um, a repercussion and also like an impact in your life, whatever you do, either like just, you know, just... Uh, uh, picking herbs, as you say, without permission and just like pulling it out and just like without like even um, sacredness and respect about that. And yeah, I definitely think that it changed so much my life in a very positive way. And, and it brings so much awareness of who I am as a like feminine also, like what is my role in this world as being a feminine, as being a, a embodying this feminine body and like what is my purpose and what is my work to do and how much I impact in a positive way being in a feminine body being being a woman and having a womb and how powerful it is that we acknowledge this and work with that because uh, also as a, a woman we have a big work to do too and also we play a big role in this mission being a woman and and now getting our power back to acknowledge this and also knowing that there are also a feminine on the masculine like it's just a balance to and how we have been living these the past uh, years and in a whole <laughs> completely disorder and putting the feminine down and just like just knowing all these make me really bring order into my life of, of slowly but um, slowly but surely to living in a order and more harmonious way because I recognize now the power of the feminine that is on me and in all my sisters 
and, and the feminine side that is also on the masculine, but how we really need to guide through because we have been living in such a disorder that everything around is a disorder. Everything around is just a mess. Like the world is a complete mess because we have lived on the wrong way. And now it's just acknowledge that we need to put everything in order from ourselves first in our lives. And then everything around us will get a start getting in order and sharing these with the people around us like my neighbors, my community, my family. And because now I do it in my life, I embody this, I live this way. And then now I share and bring all these to the people around me, like how, how respectful we need to be towards the trees, toward the stones that we don't need to like remove any stone from any place because we don't know what a stone can do in that place that it is right now. Like the, the power that the stones hold, they're keepers of knowledge. And we don't even know this. We didn't even know this. I didn't even know this before the training. Like the rocks were like uh, guardians. And now I know that. And now I see every rock, every stone, no matter which size. And I truly know that they have to be on the place that they are and not to move them because each one is holding a knowledge, each one is holding an energy. Where it is, it's perfect that they are and you don't have to move it. And um, yeah, and just in different ways, it really have had bring a huge impact and I must still feel like I'm um, um, processing and uh, uh, just uh, digesting all these and embodying each piece of it because it's already within me and I just, I'm just remembering something. And yeah, it's, it's, it's been an amazing days, months since the, the beginning to the end of the retreat, but also like past days into my life and just like putting everything together and embodying it and living this way and just being in a synchronicity with life and earth and and the mammals and with you all guys the family of the earth guardians that it's been like just growing and integrating all these it's it's beautiful thank you for that and i want to add to what you were saying about um two things with the feminine and the rock is that you know one of the things that they were saying about the feminine is that the role is reversed right now right now for example, he used the, the analogy of like when, you know, a woman steps forward through a door and the man holds the door open for her, that's the wrong order because the man should be going out front and protecting the woman and being in front of her while she's behind guiding him and giving him guidance and kind of telling him what to do in a sense. And so the woman is in the back, the one who's the driving force and kind of giving the orders and the man goes out and does the action. And, and I think that's what I heard. Maybe I heard that incorrectly, but that was my remembrance and interpretation of like, you know, when you shouldn't let a man open a door for you, he should go first and be in front and protect the woman and the woman in the, is in the back supporting and guiding and, and directing things. And um, the other part with the rocks is, um, yeah, just I've always felt like the, you know, when I sit with rocks, I, I've always felt like they're my grandparents, you know, like there's just so much wisdom mm. And then that you can just really, really feel that energy. And for him to say that they're the keepers of information where there's energy and information stored in there just makes so much sense. It's just like, yes, yes. That's what I was like really feeling so much in my heart. Um, but also, you know, you kind of coming into this realization with your own feminine, um, would you be willing to share your earth guardian name with us? Yeah, for sure. Um, mm -hmm. My air guardian was Gavia, <clears throat> which means uh, the mother of the weaving of the order. So, uh, so what it means is um, I'm the mother of the beginning of the weaving. So first before it was the night when everything was, because there are no light without the dark, right? So before me, or before this, um, 
it was the night where everything was just getting like ready and for everything just come out. And then after it comes the mother to start this weaving of the order. So it's kind of like the beginning of the, the order, the weaving of the order, the thoughts, the beginning of the order of the thoughts. But with this, it comes like the coherence of what I say is what I do. And it has to, it's a coherence of what I'm saying. So uh, for me, it's been a journey of just like keep silence and just trying to integrate this and say, okay, if I'm going to do something, I'm going to do it because I have to have coherence with what I'm thinking and saying. So to me, it's been a lesson of like, okay, now that I know this, I have to, if I'm not sure, or if I don't know if I'm going to do it or not, I have to just keep silence and just leave it on me and just processing there before I can bring it out. Because I have to have coherence with what I'm saying. That's what I'm going to do. So now it brings so much clarity in my life after that, because now I know that I have to keep silence in a lot of stabbings and, and, or think about twice before even bring an idea or say something. So I have been, you know, meditating more and just keep it on silence. I have had so many dreams after the retreat and I sometimes just wake up and just try to process all the information through from the dreams and just try to step back and just think about it. Like, what was the message from the dream? Like, what I need to learn from that instead of just reacting and just, because before when I was having these dreams, I was just like kind of acting and just texting person and people like, hey, I dream this, uh, I dream with you, like what's going on or something like that. And now I feel more like a stepping back and just like think about like, what these wanted to show me, what's the dream showing to me? Instead of just going and react or, or being a scared because, Sometimes were dreams very strong, like telling me a strong message. And I was already in fear during of the day. So now I'm just stepping back and saying like, okay, what is showing it to me? Like, is this showing me a shade and a dark spot that I don't want to see in myself? And I need to embrace it. And instead of like seeing it and it be a scared, just understanding that it's a balance, the negative and the positive. It's a balance. It has to exist. Like there are no light without darkness. And then now I just like, you know, try to process even before I put it out or even I say it to somebody. Now I don't share it. Like I totally just take it from me and process during the day. Like, oh, wow, this was showing me this. And then by the middle of the day, I already processed that information. And it's amazing how things have changed so much. Like I feel so much gratitude for have the opportunity to be with the mamos and this, you know, weaving this journey through who knows how many lifetimes, right? That I had the possibility to be here and learning this and doing this work because it's it's doing a work. It, this is not just sitting and just watching, it's doing a work through the dreams, through the actions, through the sharing with other people, through my actions every day. So it's a work, it's a work. Thank you for saying that because I, um, I've been experiencing a lot of dreams too. And some of them when I'm in it, I'm looking at like math formulas. I'm looking at like DNA codes. I'm looking at these sacred symbols and I have no idea what they mean. And when I, I'm always dreaming and I'm always having these dreams right before I wake up. So I remember just a little bit of it. And then I wake up and I'm like, well, I don't remember any of those math formulas. What am I supposed to do with that? Or I don't remember the DNA sequences of certain things. But like you said, it's, it's kind of like, a, I don't really need to, you know, like intellectually, not you know acknowledge or understand it i need to be open to the meditative mind and they talked about having two different minds in the retreat center there's the meditate there's the thinking mind and there's the meditative mind 
and to be open to the one plus one equals infinity that I don't really need to um, try to dissect or understand what it is that I'm receiving. I just need to receive it and let that information kind of work through me because I feel like a lot of what we receive, like Lee and I were talking about in the last um, episode was that, um, you know, we always felt like there was these light codes and information's coming through. And, and so you feel like you're embodying a lot of that, but there's not, we don't really need to like intellectually understand it as much as just be the broadcast for that to be the, the lighthouse that's sending out, you know, it's like we're these light towers that are sending out these light signals and kind of lighting up people around us. What I've been, you know, there's nothing we really need to do. You know, it's not something that you have to maybe even act upon other than just to integrate it in your own life, in your own light field, in your own body, and then just be that lighthouse that's kind of broadcasting this, um, this frequency and, and knowledge and, and information that's coming through. Um, so yeah, thank you for saying that. Cause that I feel, you know, with my name with Zarkundiva, the mother of the energy of the wind, I've felt, you know, that it makes a lot of sense because I always feel like I'm, I'm always um, sending my energy out and pushing things along. But I also received one of the bags that the sagas had woven for us that is the order of thought. So it's finding that balance between my energy going around and being like a ping pong ball when I've got nothing to plug into and all this energy, energy, energy. And then using the balance of the bag to be like, okay, this is the way of the order of the thought and taking a step back and trying to organize that energy that just wants to fly all over the place, <laughs> you know? So thank you for that, um, that sharing. Cause that really helped me to kind of clarify some things too. Um, yeah. And yeah. So I wanted to ask you also um, if you were, inter if you wanted to share something about what they said about the weaving and how important weaving is. Yeah, well, um, they were sharing that weaving, it's it just not a meaning about like physically weaving like a bag or a dress or a sweater. It's like we weave with our toes every single time, either positive or negative. So wherever we are weaving, it has to have a purpose and know that what are you weaving that. And uh, for me, it's very important to I have been doing exercise of weaving every morning, like into nature, like positive and thinking about all the positive things that I have on life. But at the same time, I also know that to balance, I have to put in a weaving, um, in a weaving, so uh, all the negative things that I have think uh, between those times too and through the, the the days or through the weeks and just putting all together there and put it in a place and both just like balancing both things and putting it in one place to just like sit sit there and and give it to the earth so she can just like transmute all these both things and put it on balance that's how i felt like to me it's been very powerful doing this exercise and also just uh give it like just release it into the mother earth so she can transmute all that stuff into but i'm i'm aware that the power that we hold it's huge and so these weavings are very important because we are putting everything all the information there and then just giving it to the mother earth that she will transmute all these, right? But I'm doing it conscious and I'm also being conscious of every action that I do outside. Sometimes I sleep, I'm not perfect um, and, and, and it's okay too, because we, I learned this too through them that we are not perfect and I'm still living an experience, a human experience of that is not perfect. And if I sleep sometimes, I go back and say like, okay, I just sleep this time, but I'm trying to get better and better and better and better. And um, yeah, just being aware of that too, because I know this can sound like, oh, you need to be perfect. No, no by any means. Like you are just trying to put order in your life, but you, you know, you are aware that you are not perfect. Like we're humans and um, yeah, we make mistakes. Uh, but we have to balance all that 
right? And that's why this weaving of the positive and the negative and how we can just release that into the mother and she can help us to transmute these. But what's the, the power of these women is just like putting every, all the energy there, all the thoughts, so she can work with that stuff. But knowing that it's so powerful and doing that is so powerful besides of all the people around that just think of stuff and they don't even know how big can be the impact of those those that they can have. So now that I'm aware of that, I'm doing something with that. And that's super powerful. So wonderful. Yeah, thank you for that perspective. I've been trying to put that all together in my mind too and like how this all integrates with the weaving of the thoughts. And, you know, because I, as an energy healer, and I've always been taught to like, you know, not put your negative energy into things or, you know, you don't want to give things your bad energy. And it's just like, there is no good or bad. There's positive and negative polarities and the negative comes up in order to create order and balance in things, you know? And so it's, you know, this week I've been experiencing a lot of just kind of unraveling and, and getting myself in order and releasing a lot of um, parts of me that are out of balance. And I'm like, I can look at this as like, I'm having a really hard time with all of this. Or I can look at like, yes, this is finally coming into order and balance. And this, this energy that feels like, ah, like I'm, I'm toying with so much and trying to really understand this and, and try to do it the right way. And then like criticizing how I'm doing it or not doing it. It's like, no, this is all perfect because this is me coming into order and balance with all of this because I'm recognizing the the polarities that are happening and then just finding that center equilibrium, uh, but also just making that as an offering to Mother Earth so that she can weave that into the fabric of our knowledge and our wisdom and our experience. And so my negative experience is not so necessarily something bad as much as it is information as our human growth and expansion and consciousness and how we're tuning more and more into this earth and what it takes to get there. And so then the rocks maintain that knowledge and that wisdom and hold that frequency for us when wow. we give it to the earth you know so it was just like oh thank you for that that really like <laughs> thank you for sharing too thank you for sharing sister because and you know we just I feel like we just um uh feedback each other and it's amazing how we can just help each other with all these names and all these um chart energetically of um power that, that hold the names that we can just feedback each other, uh, you know, all the, these are guardians and we can just see other perspectives that we didn't see. But then and that's why we are in this, you know, circle, like we are a circle, we're a family and, and that's amazing. It's very powerful to me now that you are sharing this with me and it made me see and, and let me see this in a different perspective that I, I couldn't see it before. Thank you. I feel like all of you, even when we were at the training, I just felt like everybody was like a, a reflection of me in some aspect. And so the way we reflect back to each other, it's like being in a relationship with 15 other people and they reflect and mirror back to you who you are and aspects of you and, you know, mirroring how they perceive that and, and how you kind of work together. And so it's been this really beautiful reflection of like, you know, it's like this huge collective of a relationship. It's like this gigantic relationship I don't know how else to describe it you know but it's just, it's very un, unusual but you know beautiful as well so um it's a wonderful part thing to be a part of and and I still every day just feel very honored to be a part of this and and to um you know have this relationship with all of, with you and with all the earth guardians and, and how we are growing and shaping this together and I'm super excited to see what we're going to do with this and how this is going to pan out for you and for me and everybody involved and everybody that's witnessing this journey and becoming a part of supporting this. Um, and we're working on ways, you know, to uh, find avenues that we can support the Mamos and their mission and balancing and, you know, the ultimate overarching goal again is the getting all of those sacred sites connected to the 7,033 points of energy on the planet and getting all of the stones back in place, you know, especially um, uh, most urgently in the heart of the world in the Sierra Nevada mountains, um, the heart of the spirit of the world where the Mamos, um, the four tribes live and getting that heart in balance along with other components. And so we're working on that and we'll have more information on that upcoming soon, we hope. So um, is there anything else you want to share Maria with us about 
you know, how your life has changed or anything else you want to, to share? I feel like uh, we are doing an amazing work together. And I feel like any anyone that is tapping or contributing in any way to help this mission, it's going to benefit in a surprisingly amazing way. So I encourage if people want to um, share or collaborate with even money or do an action or trying to spread the message uh, about the mammals and their mission, it will be so good and it will impact you in a very positive way. It doesn't have to be with money, but it has. It can be through the supporting the mission and spreading the message. That will be huge and it will help everyone all in this earth. And I feel like just um, encouraging people to do that is just so powerful. And, and it's a way that we all can heal together, even if they are not doing uh, the, what the mammals are doing, supporting the mission, it will help everyone. And I think most importantly, just getting yourself in order and your, your life in order because that will feed back into the planet. So yeah, and the order of everything. Yeah, that's <laughs> yeah. Basic, yeah. basic stuff. <laughs> yeah. Just getting in order. Yeah, wonderful. All right, Maria. Well, thank you yeah, so much for your so time. Thank you so much for seeing me. Thank yeah. you so much for inviting me. <laughs> and I'll, um, I'll put links below for um, how you can get in touch with Maria and some of her products and um, more to come on that later. And thank you so much, sister. Thank you so much, Cindy. See you soon. Yeah. To learn how you can start living a life of oneness, please reach out to me at lifeofoneness.com and learn more about intuitive healing sessions, award-winning books, events, and more.